Atma Namaste. My name is Chiara, and on behalf of the Institute for Inner Studies, it is my deepest honor to welcome you all to this very special live broadcast in preparation for the upcoming Vesak Festival. This sacred event is a time of meditation, service, and spiritual effort for millions globally. Participating in Vesak is a form of service to help uplift humanity with the tremendous blessings pouring down to the planet at this time, to our world. In these days before the Vesak festival, proper physical and inner purification is of vital importance. It's vital importance. So with the, the thanks to the Institute for Inner Studies, it is my sincere pleasure to introduce two of Grandmaster Choco Ksui's most senior disciples who will be leading today's session. Um, Master Dona Castro and Master Hector Ramos. Thank you for sharing uh, your insights and guiding us through the deeper purpose of purification. And our thanks extends to all of you who are joining us here today as we come together as one in preparing ourselves to become better instruments of service to the divine plan during this sacred event. We will now join Master Hector uh, to learn more about uh, what is the significance of the Vesak. So, Atma Namaste, Master Hector. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Master Nona and, and the Institute and everybody joining. Um, I must say that we were first introduced to the Vesak gathering or festival celebrations by Master Chokok Sui himself. In the early years so we credit to him right he he gave us so many things he introduced us to this uh type of occasion um according to the the legend as master nana likes to say it <laughs> there is a legend that um during the so-called wesak full moon there's a spiritual gathering in a certain uh secluded or secret spot in the Himalayas where great spiritual teachers gather, prepare themselves, right? And they're joined also by, by disciples. Uh, one of Master Cho's good friend, his name was, well, Mang Mike, Master Nona and I know him, told me that he's been there, but not physically. So, Maybe that's the reason why some people who search for it physically couldn't find it. <laughs> he said, it's a spiritual gathering, you know, it's not a physical gathering. And I think this is important to bear in mind, you know. There's, he said, there's no point in trying to go there physically because you will not find. <laughs> he said, it's a spiritual gathering of, of spiritual teachers, maybe, who knows, in their subtler bodies, right? So according to the the myth or the legend during the exact moment of the the west of full moon a great teacher by the great personality of the lord buddha appears and for a few minutes you know uh, gives blessings to the gathered assembly headed by the world teacher whom well in christianity we call the lord christ you know and of course in buddhism the this great being is known as the, the maitreya and in other traditions this teacher is known under different names but anyway the important an important point to remember is that during the exact uh, full moon the, the great teacher the lord buddha appears you know and sends blessings and this happens supposed to be once a year and as humanity progresses in its purification, its development, uh, the length of the appearance lengthens. Now, this is very interesting. And the capacity of the assembly and humanity to absorb increases. So I think it helps to bear in mind that, you know, even though we can talk about the traditional WESA, right significance but we have to master Nana and i were talking about this last night there has to be that newness that renewal that something new about the wasak or any spiritual gathering 
which would motivate us to go forward. There has to be that livingness. And one of the things that we learned from Master Choi, he said, is um, during the Wesak, it's the most powerful full moon gathering or meditation. But our capacity to receive the blessings and to anchor it to our countries, to our towns or cities and to our homes and to our own body, he said, depends a lot on on the purification that we can we can do before the full moon. Okay. Now, traditionally, Wesak is a celebration for the birth of the Lord Buddha, his enlightenment, and his departure from physical existence. It is said that he did those three three activities during the the full moon of you know Taurus or Wesak. Right? And in the Buddhist world, during the so-called Vesak or Vaisak or Vesak in the Buddhist kingdoms or countries, that's the time when they remember the Four Noble Truths, the Eightfold Path. They go to their temples, you know, they pray. Of course, before they do those things, they have to take a bath. They take shower. <laughs> you know, enter a sacred... <laughs> place without purifying physically right so physical purification master nana will talk about these things later but apart from this they also not just wear nice clothing it's like their christmas time but they also go out into the world to feed the hungry to give clothing to others right it's it's a time of for them practicing uh, charity practicing giving it's it's a time of virtue you know it's they don't get drunk or engage in activities which are not considered wholesome right so now on the more esoteric part master Cho said that during the wesak it's a time when spiritual practitioners whether they record they register this in their brain or not this is the time of the year when they, in the inner world, in at the soul level or on the higher soul level, Master Cho said that this is the time when disciples meet their teachers, right? So he said, for more advanced disciples, usually they just meet the teacher once a year, and it's usually during the Wesa, you know. But he said. Younger disciples are high maintenance. <laughs> they like more attention <laughs> and they bother the teacher more during the year. But he said for, you know, tried, well-tested so-called senior disciples, they, they know their duties. They know what to do during the rest of the year. And usually they meet their teacher only the, at this time of the year. So these are some of the thoughts that came. Thank you, Master Rector. Uh, why are we celebrating Vesak in April this year? There are years where oh. we celebrate in... <laughs> so. Yes, most... Thank you for that uh, difficult question. <laughs> most of the, the Buddhist world, they celebrate, celebrate Vesak during May full moon, right? But Master Cha, all throughout his career in, in teaching, he he always uh, timed his Wesak celebrations with his students uh, in, uh, in conjunction with what you call the Lucy's Trust calendar. Lucy's Trust is a spiritual organization which published the teachings of the Master DK or Master Dwalko. Uh, through Alice Bailey, one of his disciples. So, you know, maybe because Master Chua associated and, and trusted, you know, this line of revelation that he always used, you know, the calendar given by the Lucis Trust. And we followed that. We followed that, that pattern. So this year, the Wesak given through Lucis Trust calendar is on April. So. That's why we follow it. That's all. But look, there's no harm in 
celebrating it on April and also in May. I mean, like double Christmas or, <laughs> right? The important thing to realize, I remember a monk like saying, even if you miss the exact time, as long as you live the essence of Vesa, that is what matters. Thank you. Master Lonatma Namaste. The name of this session is um, preparation, preparation for Vesak. So the question is, why is uh, preparation for meditation and especially for Vesak is so important? Master Choa, you know, in many courses, uh, spiritual courses, always refer to the words, to the biblical words of our Lord, right? Jesus Christ. And uh, remember this, that uh, you cannot put new wine into an old wine bag because, uh, yeah, the old wine bag will burst, right? And I think all wine makers know this. So what does that mean? I believe that, uh, you know, we, uh, we know that when Chiara and Master Hector emphasized the tremendous energy that we will receive during the Wesak, the fullest of the, all the full moons of the year. Can you imagine that? Um, well, we cannot be old wine bags because this, these energies are renewed every year and they are depending upon also our receptivity, then uh, we have to be ready to receive because we have to be ready to also to give. And that is what is important. So I repeat Master Hector's uh, word, I, and I like that when he said, you know, we cannot just uh, celebrate and stop here. We have to live the Wesak. It is the livingness of the Wesak. Now, how can we live these divine energies, these tremendous uh, spiritual energies, if uh, you know we, it will only last. Our our capacity can only last for let's say three months, right? And that is why Master and Mang Mike even we heard this from them that uh, you know normally it will be like six months, but if you really are able to harness and to make use of that energy, you know the the receiving and the giving, yes, it can last the whole year to the next Vesak. So uh, let's go down to, yes, how do we keep ourselves ready? How do we prepare ourselves? And we divided the uh, preparation into the physical and the internal. And I'm sure some of you, if not all of you, already are aware of this. Um, yes, we have the tradition and I think uh, Master Hector more uh, can explain that later, but it is, uh, we were told that we prepare two days before, okay? You know that it's an official practice. Two days before the celebration is an intensive preparation. And then during the day itself, one has to be aware of uh, one state, right? And therefore that is another, state of preparation. And then two days after, so we have those five days, two days after the blessing part, the distribution part, the spreading part, the service part. Well, we have to be prepared also for that. So this is the reason why we are uh, going through uh, the, the, yes, whatever it takes to prepare ourselves ready for the West Act. So physical preparation, two days prior, um, two days prior, you, you can make it three days, you can make it seven days, salt bath. So if, if you can do a daily salt bath, well, that is very physical and, and many of us know the reason why, so I won't elaborate on that. Then um, the exercises, uh, we cannot leave out the exercises, we know this, uh, the, <laughs> Our joints can already be, you know, especially these days when we are only at home. Uh, some countries, some places, uh, very strict lockdown rules. 
we uh, don't go out. We, we don't walk, the, you know, the normal walk. We don't go to the gym. We don't. So we're still home. And we, we sometimes, because there are so many things to do at home, we forget to do our exercises. And sometimes, and this is happening really. Uh, it's, it's ironic, right? That when you have that time, that's when you forget things. Therefore, please don't forget your set of exercises, the normal exercises every day for the meditations, but add a little bit more. Why? The, the energy bodies, the etheric bodies, the energy bodies, and the physical body have to be ready because or else the joints will, yeah, <laughs> will show the lack of exercises. Um, then the meditation, I know the meditation is a spiritual uh, preparation, but it's also a um, physical preparation. So uh, we suggest that if you can, if you have the meditation on Twin Hearts CD of master, then do, or you can do it yourself if you don't have it, because I think this is open to the public. Uh, do the meditation on Twin Hearts with your feet in salt water. Okay, more explanation can be given to this later on, but uh, it is a suggestion to really complete the uh, physical and etheric preparation or cleansing, as we could say. Then your diet, yes, um, you can you can start seven days, but now we're only two days, which is just right. So uh, uh, follow a, a diet that is uh, abnormal, not the normal, no? Which means you can limit yourself to bread and water for two days and the day itself, or um, you, can, you can follow according to your religious tradition of fasting. Now, Master Choa, experimented on us, you know, but he did an experiment of seven days before in the olden times, in the olden years, uh, <laughs> olden times. Uh, and then at the very end, you know, the, the seventh day, which could be like the Wesak day, only water. So that is another uh, fasting procedure that you can adopt. But um, if you were to ask me, um, you can, you can fasting, Yes, because it's physical, it has to be some kind of food. So to uh, abstain from some kinds of food like meat. So no eating of meat, no taking of meat. And uh, it's, uh, how do you call that, derivatives. Um, also, according to Master Hector in India, what they follow is only fruits, nuts, right? And we do vegetables. So that is also an abstinence. We call that abstinence, but we can also call it fasting, okay? No alcohol and abstain from sex. Only two days, okay? <laughs> yes, because, you know, we, we, we not unless, never mind, that's another topic. <laughs> so, um, yes, please. Um, alcohol not even in moderation. You know, we have that expression, wine in moderation. For Dwesak, let's really abstain from that, fast from that, okay? Um, da, 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 and all kinds of, as we say, meat and the fish that we know, um, some fishes are, we, we cannot eat fishes without scales, right? So, uh, sex, then, um, if we be ready, two days, if you have, even if you have tithe through the year, as Master Hector says, uh, do a uh, service, right? For the Buddhists, they do the tithing as a the, uh, uh, blessing shared for others after the Wesak. Well, why not do a tithe? before the Wesak. Uh, why not do a service before the Wesak? 
because we know very well that tithing and service help neutralize our negative karma. So why not also apply that, okay? And uh, if there are any more questions on the physical preparations, then we can discuss that afterwards. But then now is the more important part, which is the internal preparation. And we call that the character building, right? So please don't forget. I also want you, because that's, uh, yeah, too, too long. It's actually a course, if you will <laughs> think of it. So the words of master, you know, when master says, only what is good and wholesome shall come out of me. Remember that? Only what is good and wholesome shall come to me. So let's uh, adapt applying that. Let's say only what are good and wholesome shall come out of my thoughts, my words, and my deeds, and my actions. The word I want us to meditate on the word wholesome. Again, we were discussing that, right? Because we can't compartmentalize ourselves. The Wesak is such a tremendous energy and that's why we have to be prepared all throughout all the bodies. And therefore we really have to clean up. So internal cleaning, internal um, how, re preparation, would be our thoughts, watch out, our words, be careful, and our deeds, refrain. Now, how do we get into that? We have inner reflection. We, one is, we have some practices to that, even the meditation on Twin Hearts help us. Number two, very, very important, because sometimes, Sometimes we only, you know, we, we, it brings us even to pride. We practice, oh, I am purifying myself. I am doing these practices, but we forget the practice of the virtues. We clean, clean, clean. We cleanse, cleanse, cleanse. Of course, that is amazingly wonderful, but we forget the practice of the virtues, the energizing part. And even from the basic book, to those who have taken pranic healing, from the basic book, Master has already given us. We have things to, you know, to consider, to cleanse. We have tithing and, and, and uh, service, but then we have the practice of the virtues and that we call character building. So let's not forget that very important part of the preparation, the spiritual preparation, the internal preparation, our thoughts, our words, and our actions. And let's bring that wholesomeness into holiness. I know the spelling is different, but we were discussing that uh, yesterday, that sometimes, you know, when Master Chowa used to say uh, some words in the course of time, change are distorted. Like holidays before become holidays. And holidays, which were spent in what we are now doing, becomes holidays, which means vacation time, eating time, drinking time. Think, think of the many religious holidays now, which were holy days before. So let's think about that with the Wesak. Let's not make it a holiday. Let's make it as it is, a holy day. The wholesomeness. And that wholesomeness, let us bring to livingness. I like that word that Master Hector, you know, he also invents words. <laughs> the livingness. We cannot bring it to livingness if we are not prepared. And so um, the shortest cut that I can say for the internal preparation of wholesomeness of thoughts and words and actions 
is a golden rule. As Master said one time, you know with the golden rule? Yes, you can live a spiritual life. So, does everybody know the golden rule? Well, I will just repeat, right? The practice of the virtues is do unto others what you want others do unto you. And do not do unto others what you do not want others do unto you. So it's like do in thoughts, in words, and deeds. Don't in thoughts, in words, and deeds. So I think uh, that is something to meditate on. And I'm pretty sure if you're here with us, then uh, something to, to uh, prepare ourselves. And meditation, even 10-minute meditation on this as a preparation would be sufficient for us. Nona, thank you, Master Nona. Mm -hmm. uh, Master Hector, could you please tell us what does or does not happen if we do not properly prepare, if we don't, don't do all these things Master Nana was talking about, what happened? Yes. <laughs> thank you for the question. <laughs> and thank you, Master Nona, for sharing those insights. Uh, the idea is, remember there's, there's, uh, there's this term which is embodying the teaching, right? I, I like that term a lot, embodying the teachings. And... I was reflecting a lot on this and one of the things that i realized is in our bodies there are different kinds of energies right and master cho used to say that the virtues are the energies of the higher soul so he said if you want to to put down those energies virtues energies of the higher souls higher soul into your body he said the first thing that you have to do is to clean up your bodies right otherwise he said if you don't clean up your system your ability to put into your bodies those energies will be difficult there will be an, a lot of internal struggle right because of the mixing of you know vices which are the energies of the bodies tendencies of the bodies and the virtues so it's like when when the energies descend, there's an internal conflict or fight or struggle. So there has to be the initial cleansing part. So that is an interesting thing which happens. So he said to avoid this internal fight or conflict, he said you must first purify a lot. And then you could embody or bring into your body, into your life, the teachings. You could live the teachings uh, often when the energy comes down the energy is uh, spent purifying your bodies <laughs> instead of the energies being used to bless out into the world into our homes our cities and the world of course the first point of purification is ourselves right so when, when there is lack of purification and you meditate, then the first person to be purified is really yourself or ourselves. And hence the, the so-called uh, struggles or syndromes which, which occur. Right? So, you know, we want to be, I think our goal is to purify. This is one thing, right, that we tend to do in when we were studying, we, we were good at cramming, right? Many of you did that. I did that. <laughs> we, we study intensively only before the exam, right? And sometimes I reflect like, oh, we're doing the same with the spiritual events, right? We purify only just before the, <laughs> just before the Wesa. So Mang Mike used to tell me, you, your preparation should be after the Wesa. You have to prepare the whole year. And like what Master Rana said, sometimes you're able to sustain it for three months, six months, maybe, right? But one year. So they said it's important to do the, the full moon meditations every month just to sustain us, right? So he said 
or they said that sustaining the spiritual practice the whole year is a must to prepare us for the way so but i mean here we are now right whether we prepared the whole year or not we have two days right so you could do meditation twice a day i personally would do the great invocation for example three times a day right again cramming <laughs> but but not only that i like the the idea of um master nono saying that okay maybe there's because there's so many virtues then reflect on the golden rule right golden rules for the next two days and just try to live it out so there's not much kundalini syndrome as we call in our hot take or uh, reactions which are unpleasant right because we know we know that very well if we subject ourselves to tremendous amount of spiritual stimulation we we tend to have like for me sometimes i would experience sadness coming out or irritability so when i see this too then i know oh i have not done sufficient purification so it's like okay so to answer your question it's it's like that there's some kind of internal purging which will happen master Cho calls them uh you know psychological diarrhea <laughs> right and because of this we cannot take full advantage of the occasion now this uh, question this uh, humble request is from all the participants i guess could you please both of you guide the group today through a mass healing to be better prepared for this sacred event for the Vesak? Thank you. Yes, we, we agree because it's in the program also. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just wanted to be sure. Thank you. All right. So, um, yeah, sure. So shall we, Master Hector? Yes, we'll, we'll ask Master Nana to guide us through prayers first. Okay. I and trust then... her prayers because she's been <laughs> praying a lot. She's not a crammer when it comes to prayer. <laughs> it's true. Uh, well, because the world needs prayers, right? And uh, I will just cite, a, a, I think it's Archbishop Fulton Sheen that says, more things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. And so we now do the divine healing as a prayer. Okay. So uh, you may, you know, open your, your hands with your palms facing upward or folded on your heart. And as we center ourselves, you may close your eyes. And join me in saying to the Divine Supreme Being, Lord God, thank you for your presence. We humbly ask that you look down on us, on our frailties, our physical frailties. emotional, oh, etheric, our chakras, our energy centers, our emotions, our thoughts, and our spirit. May your healing spirit rest upon me. It is through your power that I was created. It is through your power that I can be recreated. Send your healing powers to every part of my body, every system, every organ, every cell, 
every chakra to the very depths of my soul. Mend what is broken, cast out what should not be within me, rebuild me, restore my strength for service in your name. To all spiritual teachers, to our teacher, Master Chowa Kok Sui, to Lord Mahaguru Ji Meiling, to all holy teachers, holy gurus, spiritual helpers, to the holy angels, the healing angels and healing ministers, to our guardian angel, to all the great, great ones, known or unknown, thank you for your presence. And to our soul, our higher self, thank you. Thank you for granting us through you the healing power of our God. Thank you. In full faith, so be it. Uh, be aware of the blessings uh, accumulated above your head. Be aware of a brilliant, brilliant ball of light above your head. This technique, by the way, was given by Master Cho Kuk Sui in his Miracles through Pranic Healing book. And I have been using this, I don't know, since those days. <laughs> and so let's make use of what the teacher gave us. Be aware of the tremendous blessings of the teachers of God present above her head or one foot above the head, a brilliant ball of light. Joyfully look at this ball of light, gratefully be very receptive to this, this energies. The energy streams of light descend down to our head, passing through our skull, to our brain, our pineal pituitary glands, to our eyes, to our ears, to our jaw, gums and teeth, to our mouth, to our tongue. The energy passes down through our neck, our throat, our food pipe, our windpipe, thyroid, our thyroid glands and down down to the shoulders the healing energy which we have invoked we have asked for descends through the arms passing through the elbows down to your forearms your wrists your hands and then they exit as rays of light through the fingertips from the ball of light again, the blessings of healing, which we have invoked for, descends again. The blessings descend down to the upper torso, to our chest, to our upper back, our shoulder blades, to our rib cage, down to the, the thymus gland, the physical heart, the lungs. Trusting that as the divine blessings descend, the healing is happening. And as Master Cho said, the healing does not depend on us. It depends on many factors, including the higher beings, especially. The energy descends down, down to the entire spine, 
down to your tailbone, descending down to your stomach, your diaphragm, your liver, your pancreas, your gallbladder, down to your small and large intestines, your adrenal glands, your kidneys, your urinary system, down to your urinary bladder, your sex organs. Uh, for the men, especially your prostate, include that. Then down to the hips, down to your thighs, your knees, your shin, your calf muscles, down to your ankles, your feet, and then the light comes out of your toes. Now returning to the blessings which have accumulated above your head. This time the chakras will be cleansed and energized with the blessings of God and the higher beings all things are possible we submit ourselves our bodies to the blessings may we be purified and healed the blessings descend to the crown chakra to the forehead to the Agna Chakra to the throat, the front and back heart. Feeling grateful down to the front and back subtle plexus, front and back spleen, navel, the Ming Men, the sex chakra, the basic, and also the perineum. Opening your hands turning them upwards, being aware also of your feet. Your hands and the sole of the feet chakras are also cleansed and healed and energized. Now, be aware that the dirty deceased energies are coming out of your system, either out of your fingertips, out of your toes, or below your feet. And as Master Cho used to say, we are grateful to the healing angels for collecting, gathering all these dirty energies, extracting them from our system, and disposing of these energies properly. Thank you for this blessing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, be aware that below your body, there's another brilliant ball of light. So Master Cho said, this is for the earth prana, which we need into our body. Brilliant ball of light below our body. A brilliant ball of light. From there, the earth prana enters your toes, your feet, going up, up through your legs, especially to your knees if you have knee problems, up to your thighs, up to your your hips, and then going through the trunk, especially the spine, your sex organs, your small and large intestines, going up to your liver, your stomach, your pancreas, your gallbladder, uh, oh, your kidneys, adrenal glands, up to the lungs, the physical heart, the thymus gland, up to your shoulders, your arms, your hands, your fingers, up to your throat and your neck, your jaw, your gums, your teeth, your mouth, your tongue. Master Cho said the tongue and the mouth, need, they need to be purified, especially if we have the habit of saying terrible things. <laughs> now, be aware the healing energy from the earth goes up to the ears, Healing, restoring the ears, to the face, to the nostrils, to the eyes, up to the brain, the pineal and pituitary gland, to the skull. Then, be aware of the top of your head, the light, the energy from Mother Earth, sprinkles like a fountain, a beautiful fountain of light on top of your head. We are grateful. We are grateful for the blessings. Now, 
be aware of the your heels be aware of your heels the energy rapidly goes up to the back of your legs going up to your entire back up to your neck the top of the head then it flows down to the face the throat the chest the abdomen down to the front of your legs and your feet then from the front of your feet your toes rising up through the legs the abdomen the chest the throat the face up to the top of your head flowing down rapidly through your back down to your legs the back of your legs and your feet okay this is just a balance to distribute the healing energy the divine healing energy and the healing energy from the earth now from the left side of your your body left side of your feet healing energy be grateful let's be grateful let's be joyful and happy the healing energy will welcome it rising through the left side of the body up to the top of the head then gently cascading flowing down through the right side until it reaches the right foot the right side then from the right side the energy gently effortlessly rises through the right side up to the top of the head and then smiling the energy flows down to the left side of the body right and according to master cho's book miracles through pranic healing you may now concentrate on your navel right if you're pregnant you may skip this or open your eyes but smile be grateful the divine healing energy and the healing energy from mother earth are now being gathered on your navel so smile at your navel and just be aware of your breath Now, in his book, he said, concentrate one and a half inches below your navel, and the energy will be stored in the secondary navel. He said, you need this to have a reserve of healing energy throughout the day and for the many days to come. So be aware of this spot. And again, smile joyfully. Let the energy be stored there. Be aware of your breath. Now this healing technique you may do every day. I used to do this every day for I don't know how many months and this restored actually made my health a lot better so we again ask Master Nana to guide us for Thanksgiving we gener uh, grateful hearts we give thanks to the Almighty God for this uh, privilege of receiving and conducting the divine healing energies, purifying, soothing, healing divine energies. And to our teacher, Master Choa Koksui, for giving us this technique giving us this tool to his teacher, Holy Master Mei Ling, Bodhisattva Mei Ling, to all the holy teachers, holy masters, holy gurus, to all who shared in this teaching. 
to the spiritual helpers, to the holy angels, the healing angels and healing ministers, to the divine beings, to the great ones, who with love and mercy make sure that we receive these healing energies. We thank them all. And to our higher soul, we thank We thank you for these valuable, invaluable blessings for the healing. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. We can um, now continue with some uh, question and answer from the participants. They can write their question in the chat so we can uh, ask to Master Actor. One or, or Master Nona, one of the question is, um, on what should be focused after the Vesak exactly? Master Hector? After the Vesak, the two days after the Vesak, uh, the two days are considered to be days of uh, distribution. That is the tradition, right? So those are the days when, well, even from the Vesak, you could already ask for your wishes, your aspirations to be blessed. Very important, right? But also after the West, after two days, you could keep the blessings. But not just of our aspirations and wishes, but, you know, do more AV Twin Hearts meditation. But, you know, with the objective of just releasing, releasing, releasing whatever energies we have received. Uh, also, Master Cho said that the two days after the West are very, very good for healing. So you could do a lot of healing if you want, right? But think of those two days as, you know, powerful days to serve. You could tithe more if you want, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, give more. Uh, the the day of the Wesak is really the day of receiving and assimilating. But the two days afterwards are really the days of, they're not for us anymore. They're for, for the world, for you know, the people, the beings around us. Service and tithing. Thank you very much, Master Hector and Master Nona, and thank you to all the participants. And um, we close our session. Before we end, we, we just want to remind us that, uh, you know, for the WESAC, those who will be doing their their ceremonies, their the celebration. Please don't forget, you know, because we belong to a group, right? The, those who, you know, pranic healers and masters tradition, to wear white. To wear white if you're going to participate in the celebration or some light colors, okay? Yeah, we're talking of, you know, how master would expect us. And don't forget your exercises and a tradition again, uh, bring bottles of water or a container with water and put them in front of you, you know, uh, not on your side, not under you, as Master Hector would say, you know, but in front of you so that during the, the coming down of the energies, then that's why we, we have, no? Some of us still have the water, the Wesak water, which I know of testimonies that had been uh, given miraculous uh, Yes, results. And a notebook, probably, to, because Master also encourages us to write down any experiences right after. You know, the notebook can be your blessing notebook, your, your objectives, aspirations, silent desires of your heart notebook. But it can also be your experiences that you might have had during the WESAC. And don't forget to face east when following the celebration. That's Master it. Nona, 
Can mm. can people? This is a question, please. Can people who are suffering from uh, COVID or recovering from COVID nineteen uh, can continue with this Vesak preparation or do Vesak meditation? Can they do that if they are recovering, for example? Yes, with my scanning, as long as you know recovering. You said recovering, right? Okay, so do a lot of exercises, and as Master Hector said, um, open eyes if you can keep your eyes open. And the moment, as Master Chowa would say, the moment you would feel uncomfortable, now take it on yourself, stop the meditation and just be there, be still, be aware, not necessarily following. You get what I mean? Open eyes, be still, be aware. But for some, because it depends upon the state of, of the stage of recuperation, can we be, it's a question, can we be healed if any ailments of animals when attending the Vesak meditation? Oh, I have known testimonies, but it's not for all. I cannot just generalize, right? But yes, if you ask for healing, if you are receptive and conductive for healing, impossible? No, many things are possible with divine energies, Divine, soothing, and Master always says, divine, soothing, healing, purifying energies. So yes, it is possible. But we have to ask. Thank you. Last question for Master Hector. Um, what can we do to spread the energy of Vesak to family members? Oh, you, you bless them. You bless them with love. You forgive. I think it's very important to forgive. You know, we, we have old hurts and pains from our siblings, from our parents, <laughs> right? Because we share family karma. I think it's very important to forgive, to bless with peace, to imagine. I, I do this regularly. I imagine I forgive family members. Then I imagine I'm hugging them and we are at peace. We, we have love. And... And I visualize each one of them, including myself, smiling or laughing a lot together. I think it's very, very important. Sometimes for spiritual events, we become, of course, these are solemn, important moments, right? But let, let us not forget to be joyful, right? Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that I learned from Master Choa. When I first met Master Choa, he said, you're too serious. He said, you know, that serious people go to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> so he encouraged me to, he said, one of the, the qualities, the energies, of the heart chakra is humor. So he told me, you need to cultivate your humor, your joyfulness, your happiness. Then you could be a blessing to others. He said, you have no right to depress other souls. So because of this, I, I learned to, you know, like, look, Master Nana smiles a lot. We laugh a lot when Master Nana and I talk or we're together. We, we laugh a lot. And funnily, I recollect many really funny, crazy happenings. <laughs> like last night, I was sharing with Master Nana. Anyway, so these are some and of the things that, that you father, do. The, the comment of your father, you know, so that that would be very good for <laughs> everyone. Yes. Yes, I, I think. Uh, maybe this was circa 1988 or so. I was a beginner in pranic healing. I was doing twin hearts every day. And back then, you know, I was proud. I memorized the book, uh, you know, twin hearts thing because there were no recordings. So just imagine you're meditating one morning you know, and then you, you feel, or I felt my father walking around. I opened my eyes. And I noticed he was looking at me. And he asked me, what are you doing? Well, I'm meditating. What is that for? It's, it's, uh, it's to make me better, a better person. And he said, yeah, but I don't see any difference. <laughs> now, just imagine you've been meditating for many weeks or many months, and that's what you hear from a family member, right? Because your family, they know you. You cannot fool your family. 
you may think oh, I'm doing this spiritual practice and so on, but they know you from your childhood. They see you. They also observe you. So you may say something, but you know, you cannot fool them. So I went back to Master Cha and you know, Mang Mike and and Master Cho told me, you must physicalize your loving kindness. You know, a loving kindness is just a feeling. It's not just a feeling or an emotion. So because of that, I started to think, how do I give my loving kindness a very concrete expression, right? Like what Master Nona said, how, how do you embody it how do you live it how do you make it a living practice you know like Mang mike said to me you must live as a soul if you are the soul and you are the soul how do you treat others so i became super helpful at home you know now, by the way it's not just during the full moon or the west up i mm -hmm try to really practice it on a daily basis not to impress my father right but i started to really without them asking me because before that they would have to threaten me to be helpful <laughs> but after that like okay let me practice this let me see what master cha and mong mike really meant right so i became very helpful like would clean the house, the dishes, the toilets. I would do the gardening, water the plants, clean the car, right? And this is funny eh? because my father said, no, oh, you, you could go anytime you want to the Prana Healing Center. That's fine. <laughs> and then many, many years later, this Masucha hosted a dinner with my family. And when my father came into the restaurant, he extended his hand to Master Cha to shake his hand, you know. And I was so happy they shook hands. But my father told Master Cha, thank you for changing my son. <laughs> I could not do it. <laughs> and... I, I look I, I still have tears recollecting the joyful moment but really I think the teachings can transform us if we just put our mind our devotion our heart into it if we just really like ask ourselves how do we live or how do I live the teachings right how do I embody them not on a yearly basis but on just a day-to-day -day yeah, simple yeah, yeah. moment right how do I become a living soul? Mm. So that was my experience. But thank you, Master Nona, for remembering. <laughs> because we say livingness, right? So we have to live the energies of the Wesak. And not only the Wesak, it's uh, all the teachings and everything. But the Wesak is a yearly reminder of, of all what we have learned. And we help each other, remind each other. Well, thank you very much from all of us, for all the participants, Master, Master Nora and Master Hector, for this uh, great chance to, to learn about this sacred event of ESAC.